everybody! Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so happy to have you here for this video. These are the kinds of beginner makeup tips that I really wish I would have had when I started with makeup. All of the things I'm going to mention are things that would have taken the way I was initially doing something and made it so much easier and so much better as far as the end result goes. I think these are tips that will translate to absolutely any age as well. I think we automatically think that a makeup beginner is someone in their teens, but I have heard from so many people who watch my channel who are just starting with makeup who are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you name it. And I really think these tips, techniques, and kind of habits to think about, I think they will translate across all ages. And if you're an old pro and you're watching this and you're thinking with some of these tips, dang, I already knew that, give yourself a pat on the back and carry on because these are, again, the things I wish I would have known starting out with makeup. And if you guys are interested in some sort of an updated makeup start kit video that is very product focused, let me know if you're interested. But now, five general tips, things I want to focus on. Um, using a foundation buffing brush. This would have helped me so much in my early days applying foundations, and I'm particularly talking about liquid foundations. This brush that I'm holding is from Target. It's the Up and Up Complexion Brush. It's super soft, it cleans up really well, and it applies the foundation so evenly and beautifully on the skin. And you'll see me using this with the IT Cosmetics CC Plus product, but I mean, think of any liquidy consistency that you might be using. This brush really helps it buff into the skin. And if you want, over areas where you need more coverage, let's say for me that's my under eye area, a patting motion with this brush works really well also. And it's also helpful for concealer as well. You know, I've applied a little MAC Pro Longwear, and then you can stick with this same brush and just dab over the concealer. You will be so surprised by how much coverage your concealer has. If we want to start throwing around the word flawless, um, I think that's going to depend on what foundation you choose to use, but I mean, it really does give you a nice finish using a brush like this and just makes the whole blending process so much easier. Number two tip, you've got to use some sort of shadow primer or base. You can buy all of the shadows in the world, you can buy out the drugstore, but they're not going to look as nice on your lids or last as long if you don't put something on there first. And there were so many years where I don't even think a lot of bases or primers were on the market like when I was starting out, so it's no wonder I got so frustrated frustrated with eyeshadows for years. But now there are plenty of things out there. One really affordable one that I think is one of the best is from Milani. It's just called the Eyeshadow Primer. As you can see, it's a much loved product. I've nearly used it up. I think it's very comparable to the effect Urban Decay Primer Potion gives me. But you want to apply this all over the lid, into the crease, up to the brow bone, and if you want, if you know you're going to be doing some shadow under the eye, you can even dab it down there as well. But this slightly tacky but not too thick product is going to take even lesser pigmented shadows and make them really stand out on your lids. Number three tip please seek out smaller eyeshadow brushes. If you're struggling with eyeshadow application, if you're watching other people in videos and you're feeling like they're turning out a flawless look and then you pick up those same brushes and those same eyeshadows and it looks like it's a big muddy mess on your lids, use smaller brushes so you have control. That is the key word. Once I started doing this, I feel like my makeup world completely changed. The first smaller applicator that I think you need to pay attention to is the sponge tip. There is no reason why you can't use a sponge tip. In fact, it will pack shadow on your lid just as well as any flat eyeshadow brush out there, if not better. I remember reading in one of my Kevin Aquan makeup books, and at times he used sponge tips. If they were good enough for him, they're good enough for me. And throughout this little section of the video, I'm using on purpose an eyeshadow quad that's not super pigmented. It's the uh, Autumn Coppers Expert Wear Quad from Maybelline, and I very easily can build up color on my lids with a sponge tip. I also do think a smallish flat brush is essential to have, um, especially for your darker shades. Anything that you kind of want to go beyond your lid space with, um, I think it's good to then put down the sponge tip and grab a brush. And this small shadow brush from Sonia Kashuk, such a must-have. I've had it for years. It's really great for precise placement. If you've got small eyes, or again, if you feel like you just can't control these larger brushes and get your shadows placed where you want them, use this. Pat your shadow into your crease 
crease or into your outer corner, you'll be so impressed with the outcome. Also, a smaller sized crease brush. This one from Sigma is called the Dome Utility E34. This is really great and so much smaller compared to say an E40 brush. This can easily wedge into your crease. Place that shadow exactly where you want it and don't worry so much at this point in time about blending it out, but placing it exactly where you need it. A small brush is great for this. Another brush that I have been using since seriously the start of my channel, this is going back to like 2008. I still remember this thing. I still have the exact same brush. I can't believe how many years I've been talking about this. But if you can find the Essence of Beauty Fine Crease Brush Duo, this is one of the two in that duo. This is the smaller of the two. And this is another really great way to build that outer V up with ease. It's like you're basically saying, okay, I want that V here and here. Okay, done. And then you want your bare fluffy brush. There is a place for this in your collection. For several years, I think in my makeup life, I did not use like a bare blending brush. I just didn't know what to make of brushes this size. Use them bare and go over the border of your look and really buff out that edge of your shadow. Because your smaller brushes have helped you place it, this will help you blend it. So you just buff back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and this will be responsible for giving you that more finished, professional effect to your makeup. Number four, a tip pertaining to false eyelashes. At some point in time or another, everyone is a beginner with false lashes. Everybody has a first time using them, and usually that's not a success. I know it wasn't for me the first, like, I don't know, dozen times probably. Here's something I wish I would have had when I was starting out. This little gizmo. This is called the False Lash Applicator. It's from BH Cosmetics. It was just a few dollars, and this makes the lash application so easy. And right now, you know, I'm pretty comfortable using my fingers to apply false lashes, but when I was starting out, I really think this would have seriously made the process a breeze. So first off, you you know, you're applying your glue. I do think using a glue with the wand applicator like Revlon Precision Lash Glue is essential. It really helps you control the amount of glue going on the band. And for a lot more specific lash tips, I do have a video from a couple years back called False Eyelashes 101. I still do all the things I talk about in that video. I still refer people to that all the time. So in-depth false lash application. But this tool, this is something I've come across since then. You grab the lash in the center of the band with this. If you've got shaky fingers it's nice because you can squeeze the crap out of this tool and the lashes stay still. You can easily see where you're placing the lashes on your lash line. I like to put it right on my liner very very close to my lashes. You can press down your ends and then use the opposite edge of the tool to kind of tamp it down and make sure all of that lash band is in contact with all of your lash line because that's sometimes the part of this process that gets people because you think okay I've done it I've done it I've got the lashes on my lash lash line and then you start messing around with your finger and before you know it you've pulled the dang thing off because your finger has stuck to the glue. This is really good about not sticking to the glue. Tip number five, I think a really helpful thing for your lips is to pre-treat your lips before you ever put any actual product on them, any lipstick products. I mean when you sit down to do your makeup, put a lip balm on like right alongside your moisturizer that you put on your face. I think of this as pre-softening my lips and getting them ready throughout my whole makeup process. It's like they're cooking or they're getting ready for the product that I will ultimately put on there. So whatever balm you like, maybe it's straight up Vaseline, maybe it's an EOS lip balm, maybe it's one of these Nivea lip balms. I really like these. Put that on there, go through your whole makeup routine. And then when it comes time for lips and you're thinking, but Emily, I wanna use one of those great new matte lip products and isn't that balm gonna mess with the finish? Here's what you do, just blot the balm off. You will still have taken advantage of all that moisture. You might not have to do that if you're just wearing a gloss or if you're wearing a creamy lipstick, but if you're wearing something matte, you get rid of any shine and then go about your business. I used one of these um, NYX Liquid Suede's in the shade Soft Spoken today, but your lips will look so much better for having done this. They will appear more plump, they will feel better under you know any sort of matte lip color or really any lip color you put on. Exfoliating your lips several times a week, the e.l.f. Lip Exfoliator, I mean, just run this over your lips. That can really help with the softness and getting them nice and smooth, but you can't really expect any of these new matte products that are coming out to look good on gnarly, dry, crusty, cracky, nasty lips. And those, my friends, are my five makeup lifesavers for beginners. I hope these were useful. I hope you can work some of these things into your routine, and hopefully it will make life easier. It will just 
just make your whole makeup experience a little more pleasant because that's what it should be. You know, when you sit down to do your makeup, it should be fun. It's this time that you're giving to yourself, that you're spending on yourself. It shouldn't be filled with frustration or feeling like I don't know what I'm doing, but hopefully some of these tips will help you out as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Share this with your makeup beginner friends and I'll see you later. Bye.